look, it does not take a higher education 494 topics class on culture to understand that most culture in America over the past 150 years has been created from, from specifically black culture, okay? Even if we're looking at things like Elvis or whatever teen girls like, those seem to be the two. So culturally in America, this is a big deal. I think even outside the state, I don't know, I can't speak for outside the states. But I assume it's a pretty big deal, relative. Like we are talking about one of the most commercially successful artists and then one of the most critically acclaimed artists. Clashing. Don't start, I need to get my food. We'll wait for people to trickle on in. We'll wait for people to trickle on in. I'm assuming this is a reference to uh, first off, this is Jake's, uh, what's it called? His embassy. And then these are the pedos in his entourage. I'm assuming is what these little dots mean. Honestly, this shit looks like a fucking <laughs> YouTuber thumbnail. You put Rainbolt's head right here. I took the CIA test to see how well I would do. 800K views. Easy. Easy. Put Mr. Beast pogging. That's a thing, right? It's like a Mr. Beast pogging extension. All right. Let me tag the entirety of my Discord. Let them know I'm live. This is not what I planned to do today, by the way. It is what we have ended up doing. Uh, today, I was supposed to play Pokey Rogue, which I'm still going to play. We're just going to move it to Monday instead. But it kind of works out in a way because I have... A very special YouTube video that I've been working on for, dude, two months. No. Yeah, three months. And I'm going to drop it at the end of this stream. It's a YouTube exclusive, so none of you have seen it. The skinny is I went undercover at a Michelin star restaurant to see if I could fool totally normal people into thinking they're eating a Michelin star meal. That's the premise. It was me, it was Sea Dog. The video is fucking insane. There's a lot I can't tell you about it yet, but I'll just let the video speak for itself and we'll talk about it at a future date. It dude, it's it, it was actually fucking insane. All right, first off, let me tag everyone. Kendrick dropped a new song. Wow. Who would have believed it? Welp. Guess we got to watch. <laughs> I think I'm the only one who strung together that sentence in regards to watching his video. I don't think anyone else phrased it like that. Slime B-Ball video, probably another week or two on that one. Gotta let that one cook. Thank you for the membership, Jumi. Appreciate the 29 months. Hey, Lud, first time in a live. Curious on how many turtle feet you ate today. I've only eaten two turtle feet. I don't think I've eaten a single turtle foot. Unless I'm getting got by something. So me and Cutie... Well, actually, Cutie went to a comedy show last night. If you don't know, in L.A. right now, there's like a comedy uh, palooza. There's basically a Netflix is, what is it called? Netflix is dead? Netflix is, there's a Netflix comedy thing going on in L.A. So for like 10 days, Netflix is a joke. That's it. For 10 days, there's like every comedian ever performing across L.A. From like mega stars, like, you know, what, Kevin Hart fucking Bill Burr to like OGs, Daniel Tosh, etc. So anyway, Cutie went last night with a couple of friends. Well, I think it was like Shake, Yingo, uh, Don B. And then I hung out with them after I streamed. And then Cutie was like, dude, what is this rap thing about? And I basically pulled up and then we all together watched <laughs> every single video in order from push-ups well i guess the future metro song first but then push-ups and then all the replies a lot has been said already is what i realized watching it all I, I there's about an album's worth of songs that have already been released what was her opinion her takeaway was basically like damn this is just swifties for guys and i was like you're not wrong like i hate to say it i don't like hearing that back at me I don't like hearing it, but she's not, ultimately she's not wrong. 
That's pretty fucking real. Because we're even doing the thing, and I say we like I'm the one who's fucking dissecting shit. I find myself to be more of a passive observer, but still. The people who are like dissecting all the lyrics are dissecting shit that I know as a fact both Kendrick and Drake did not mean. We're on that 10th grade English teacher wave where it's like, what does it mean when they say she had a blue ribbon? What does the green light signify? And they make up 800 things. People are doing that. They, Swifties do it, and then people are doing it with this rap beef. Uh, all right, are we ready? Are we ready for a listen through? This dropped fucking 16 minutes ago, which feels unnecessary. Before I even watch it, this feels unnecessary because coming into today, I feel like not, you know, it's not a consensus, but majority definitely, I think, think Kendrick is winning this beef so far. Everyone talks about Meet the Grams like they saw a snuff film. <laughs> Everyone's like, dude, I don't even enjoy listening to it. I really don't want to listen to it more than once. I heard it once, and man, that was enough for me. I'm good. He wins. He's up. That's okay for me. I'm good, though. And so anyway, let's take a look. The, the one thing I think we all desire are receipts. Because fucking everybody's saying shit, and I feel like every like people are lying. Kendrick has lied. Drake has lied. Who lies the least is the question. Who has the most evidence? Okay, maybe I'm brainwashed by the people on Twitter.com, but certainly I have to believe there's like way more depth to calling him a 69 god outside of saying, you know, He's a munch. <laughs> it's got it's got to be it's got to be deeper. Six God is his nickname. So is 69 God, like what is that? Is that It doesn't feel like much of an insult then. If someone calls him this if like if I walked around and I said I'm the 6 God and then someone goes you're the 69 God, uh, dude, I wouldn't be like Maybe, maybe it is, I mean, yeah, I guess maybe it's just harping on the fact that he seems to be a fucking, uh, what's that shit called? A sex, maybe a sex addict. All right, let's see if Genius is updated. slow dude we're slow right now scribing bro the words per minute from john genius are quite quite slow dude i can't believe they're still at d rose <laughs> Dude, Haley Joel Osment has been a weird center point of this. Where's Haley Joel Osment right now? What's the voice of Sora has to say about all this? I wanna, I wanna know who he's talking about because I don't know Drake's entourage, and it feels like he is insinuating that there are a dozen or so predators in his entourage but i'm curious the larger examples which were brought up Haley joel osmit liked kendrick's original tweet really <laughs> oh yeah he did he liked the meet the grams <laughs> Uh, last night. That's for this is Haley Joel Osment's likes. 
He also likes when uh, Shohei Otani hits a dinger. Two great things in this world. Damn. Beat your ass and hot the Bible with God watching. What is the uh, certified lover boy, certified pedophile? <laughs> Um, what is what is Drake's out here? I feel like he needs a song quickly. I don't feel like there is none. Is the answer, right? Just realized the thumbnail is from the Sexual Predators app. Wait, actually? Is it like a legit screenshot or is it like what you would see on that? Yo, who's got that Bo Burnham A minor? Because <laughs> I, I will say, look, we got to give credit where credit's due here. What year is this? Dude, the title of this is insane. The title of this video is insane. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> the hard cutoff is crazy. <laughs> That's so much more aggressive, actually, than the way Kendrick phrased it. What was Kendrick's line? Shit, genius. Oh, they got it. No, they don't. I'm trying to strike a chord, and it's probably A minor. There it is. It's Drake's house. Yeah, it's Drake's house dotted with pedophiles. All right, what? Who? Oh, shit. So yesterday's stream, I tweeted this out. I don't know if y'all saw. I happened to be live when both the Drake track and the Kendrick track dropped, so I watched them both. Uh, but if you rewatch the VOD, I think the Drake parts, I think it's either muted or cut out. I don't know which one because it was fucking copyright claimed. But not only copyright claimed, I don't really care if I don't make money off the VOD. It was also blocked in certain countries. You stole Tim's tweet? What do you mean I stole Tim's tweet? This happened to me. What do you, this happened to me. This is me. It happened to me. I didn't even see. I just, I saw this happen and I screenshotted it. I screenshotted it. He tweeted it first. I screenshotted it at 8 a.m. What do you want from me? You liked my tweet and took it? Whoa, I, I resent this timeline. I tweeted it, then liked it. Um, I did, I did see this too. This is the Kendrick Lamar subreddit, which is popping off right now. Understandably so, but it just had my tweet. <laughs> like I'm the guy, <laughs> like I'm the fucking guy. You got to get the Ludwig reaction in. Folks, what does Ludwig think about the drama? <laughs> Go off, white boy. <laughs> Dude, I'm just sitting. I'm sitting my ass. I'm, I'm, I was actually literally walking through the streets trying to find Cutie and Crew, listening to the songs. And I was like, damn, I actually really like this Kendrick song, specifically Euphoria. I don't think any rational person goes, Dude, I actually like Meet the Grams. What a fun song. And I was like, man, I wish I could get more of that. 
I do feel a bit like Ja Rule. Boys, today the plan is simple. We are going to call Drake a Smash Ultimate player until he responds. Dude, is this Yingling's fucking Reddit account? What is this? Ying King? What a wild crossover. <laughs> I did <laughs> I did see. I think it was on Meet the Grams. It was like a screenshot of Jack Septikai being like, damn, this song's crazy. And then and then it was a screenshot of that. And it was like uh what is blood doing here <laughs> uh which i thought was funny although i think jack's been a an avid kendrick fan mr beast posted a youtube short with the evil guy oh no i saw that i saw that this is your greatest tweet no not even close man I know my greatest tweet off top. I can't even find the damn tweet. But one time I had an idea for a shirt. That said, I don't need Google. My wife's boyfriend knows everything. And then I made that shirt. Oh, here it is. I wear all my shitty graphic tees to the gym, but this one has received the most stares. That was a lie. I made this shirt. <laughs> I made this shirt and then wore it. Everywhere. I fucking love this. I still have this shirt. Yeah, we listened to the song. We're going to listen to it again, though, but I want to wait until there's a like a lyric site. This is pretty caught up. Should we try to run it again? How far how far does this go? You can be from north side. What two chains say you good, but he lied. No, it's not even close, right? It's not even it's not even like a halfway. Fry LP, thank you for the membership. Appreciate it. Your girlfriend's tweets are mad funny. My girlfriend's tweet. My girlfriend's. Uh, my girlfriend's funny. Why not run the full gambit and listen in order? Oh, like through all the songs. Uh, I think a few of them are gonna get me fucked. I think I can only listen to the Kendrick ones. The 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 Drake ones just straight up get me blocked. Now, look, I don't want to end up. I think I came into this with a very clear bias towards Kendrick Lamar because I just listened to more of his music. Um, like willingly. But I feel like people are quick to shit on Drake songs, which have been pretty good. Uh, they're definitely not as, like, scathing. But I think they're good songs with pretty witty lines. But ultimately, I said the same thing yesterday. I feel like Drake is using a buckshot, like, shotgun shooting at, like, five different people, including Rick Ross for whatever reason. Like, that is even an important thing to do. And then Kendrick has like a sniper honed in on Drake and is just repeatedly shooting over and over and over and over and over again. Did you hear Chris Brown diss Quavo? No, I mean, frankly, no one gives a shit right now. <laughs> Look, man. It's like the Super Bowl's on, and you're like, dude, my high school varsity game is going crazy right now. It's an OT. Any other day, I got you. I'm there. I'm in the stand. I'm, I'm losing my little my my nuts for that. Today, it's it's just not genius updated. Finally.
This is pretty deep. All right, let's run it with genius. Uh, all right, boom. Psst. A million views in an, in forty six minutes is crazy. Okay. Make sure you hide your little sister from them. They tell me Chubbs the only one that get your hand me downs. Okay, is ch who's Chubbs? The two clips I know. Or the two, the two things that the only two things I know, and I, I could ha not have all the info of Drake. In the pedophile allegation, uh, allegations are one, Millie Bobby Brown. And like his relationship with her, and then two, there's that clip of him bringing up a girl on stage, and apparently she's 17 years old, and then kissing her on the stage. <clears throat> Those are the only two that I know of. That video is fucking crazy. He dated a 16-year-old. Did he? Did he? Because, uh, and the only reason I ask is because sometimes people do just say shit. 17's the age of consent. In Texas, frankly, if Drake uh, was uh, hooking up with a 17 year old, I don't really care what the age of consent is. I think it's fucking weird <laughs> for a world renowned superstar to uh, one want uh, two, and then two like commit to having a relationship with a 17 year old. Bro, like, have you have you talked to someone in high school? I share nothing in common with someone in high school. I'm 28. How the fuck old is Drake? Bro's 37. They, they, dude, they made a fucking. There's a hard, fast rule for this. They made a, a math calculation. If you really need a calculation, you know, I would say, hey, just shoot for people that are. Your general age group that share your general interest in life that you feel like you can share the journey together. But if you do need to do a calculation for whatever reason, it divide your age by two plus seven is it's pretty it's pretty foolproof of a rule. I'm glad he Fucked on Wayne Girl while he was in jail. Is that true? There's so much drama and tea. Is there no rapper who just chills at fucking home? You know? Just vibes. Plays video game. Then drops cool songs. Then goes back to chilling and vibing. Why the fuck when I click on some shit does it go away? J. Cole. <laughs> true. Actually true. It is J. Cole. Except for the one slip up. Dude, the memes about J. Cole are funny. The memes about J. Cole being like... <laughs> Like Drake being like, hey, Kendrick, you're short. Kendrick, I hope you fucking die in hell. And then it's J. Cole, and it's like the end of Evangelion orange goo screenshot. Or like, I, I saw one, it was just a uh, Ghibli anime cooking food compilation. Okay, wait, what what is what is this story? Kendrick claims Drake sweat slept with Lil Wayne's girl when he was in prison. And then Drake got a face tattoo to apologize about that? That's Logic. Logic was not chilling in retirement. I know because I played against him in chess and I fucking destroyed him. And I know he's seething every day. Drake Lil Wayne tat 
tattoo. Oh, he actually did get a tattoo of Lil Wayne's face. Wait, actually, W apology, though. <laughs> you know, like, if, if Aiden really did me dirty and then got a full back tattoo of my face... It's like, hey, man, chop it up. <laughs> face tattoos are, I always thought face tattoos were, and I, I hate to speak in absolutes and also dog anyone in chat who may, may, might have a face tattoo, but I've always thought face tattoos were a little, just because I find it very hard to interpret a face with tattoo art. It's very easy to fuck up. So easy to fuck up, dude. I guess what I'm trying to say is this is not anymore uh, just a simple rap battle. I guess it hasn't been for a while. This is like a teardown of Drake's character in an irreparable way is the goal. Damn, cutie's going off. That's crazy. <laughs> uh, that's crazy. <laughs> Dude, Drake memes are so pervasive. I don't even recognize it until I'm seeing it now. What's crazy, I'm tweeting this out right now, but what's crazy is I don't, I, I honestly do not give a fuck if Drake has a daughter or not. I don't even care if Kendrick fully lied about it. I feel like all I care about is Drake replying to the pedophile allegations. Or what will more accurately happen is like spin them on Kendrick. Because Kendrick, like, he doesn't have a squeaky clean record. He's collaborated with a bunch of people who are not fucking upstanding people. Not upstanding folk. Uh, Like in Mr. Morale, right? He had a line about R. Kelly. Kodak Black, yeah. Kodak Black on his last album, and then R. Kelly, he was an R. Kelly defender. And that's, like, probably, like, one of the worst guys to defend, right? You're not... And, like, look, ultimately, I think what Kendrick's saying is more powerful. But, like, for, for him to say, hey, throw you in a cell with Harvey Weinstein, it's like, bro... I hear you, but R. Kelly and Harvey Weinstein are basically interchangeable based off their crimes. He isn't an R. Kelly defender. I'm assuming this is going to be Drake's response, but yeah. Uh, let's see it. He threatened to pull his music from Spotify in 2018 when Kendrick, uh, excuse me, when... Um, People were calling for R. Kelly to be removed from the, the site. Which is like, that's, that's fucking, that's, that's like, that's a staunch defense. His label wanted to. Mm, I think at a certain point, if it's your label and you're Kendrick fucking Lamar, you should not be so detached from the actions of your label that they can get away with that without you stopping that and I don't think he has ever spoken against it right and didn't he speak about um 
I guess he had a line though. I think about R. Kelly and Mr. Morale, right? I think Robert Kelly, if he weren't molested, I wonder if life will fail him. This is just what I'm assuming will happen. Look, I'm not here to actually weigh the merit of either. And ultimately, I think it's like a deflection. If a guy is saying, hey, you're paying a bunch of predators, and then you go, well, hey, you defended a predator once, I would sit here, the very wise fence sitter, going, both are bad. And I would be correct, because they are both bad. But it makes much more sense from a Drake response to, like, deflect and accuse, as opposed to be like, like, you can't make a song that is like, by the way, I'm not a predator. I'll date any girl as long as, she, as she's not a redditor. 20 plus, 20 plus. You know that, you know, that's not what it's going to be. <laughs> I'm telling you. If they would stop dropping these songs while I was live, I would be in the booth yesterday. Uh, what did Kodak Black do? He broadcast an Insta Live video of himself in Washington, D.C. with several other men while a lone woman performed oral sex on them. His Instagram account was hit with a record high during the broadcast. <laughs> That's crazy. The rapper later posted a message on Twitter about the incident reading, If I could change, I swear I would. I tried everything, but I'm so hood. Uh, <laughs> That's crazy. And then in 2017, he wrote on Instagram about his preference for light-skinned women over those with dark skin. He also said in an interview that actress Kiki Palmer was straight, but he don't really like black girls like that. Some Twitter users reported responded negatively, provoking Kodak Black to delete both his posts. He then stated that light-skinned women are, quote, easier to break down. Black uh, women are too, uh, Jesus Christ, and that he does not like his skin complexion. Then he co collaborated with Kendrick Lamar on Silent Hill and Mr. Morale. Uh, in 2019, he garnered controversy when he offered to wait to have sexual relations with Lauren London, the girlfriend of late rapper uh, Nipsey Hussle, who was shot and killed. That's crazy. Who was shot and killed <clears throat> a few days beforehand. He said he would give her a whole year if she might need a whole year to be crying and shit for him. He sounds like a psychopath. Or like a sociopath. He received immediate backlash for these comments. Just incredible DJ for the radio station Power 106 announced the station would be boycotting Kodak Black's music. They said we stand with the family. Uh, fellow rappers T.I. in the game also responded uh, with T.I. saying, You are out of pocket. In a video recorded for Kodak Black on April 7th, Kodak Black responded, If I disrespected you, Lauren London, uh, in any shape or form, I'm sorry. If? If? What do you mean If? Like, it's a fucking coin flip. And even though I didn't? If I respected you, Lauren London, in any shape or form, I am sorry, even though I didn't. Jesus Christ. He issued a more in-depth apology in 2020 while serving a four-year prison sentence. And then this is his legal issues uh, part. Dude, this is longer than my whole Wikipedia. Dude, the legal issues is half of his damn Wikipedia. <laughs> what the fuck did he go to jail for? Cannabis? Okay, well, that's bullshit, we can say. Aren't they changing? They're changing that law soon, right? Isn't Joe Biden changing that law? Cannabis is going to be reclassed as a, uh, what is it, class three fucking drug? Schedule three drug instead of a schedule one. Um, they always say that before the elections. Yeah, I guess that's true. But I think he kind of has to do it, no? The youth is not for Joe right now. Uh, okay, then he was uh, in jail for armed robbery. Okay. He pleads no context, uh, contest to a misdemeanor drug charge. He 
He was indicted by a grand jury in South Carolina and was scheduled to go on trial on a f- charge of first-degree criminal sexual conduct. This was later postponed. It was Ramona Sanchez. And she said he was constantly burping during her class, and when asked to leave, he refused. When Sanchez threatened to call 911, he grabbed her phone and her wrist. Okay. Dude, this is long as shit. Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. I've never done this before. I'm going to go AI on this bitch. Can you summarize this? You skipped the worst one further up, did I? Kodak Black was released from jail in Florida and then transported to South Carolina to face charges of sexual assault. According to the victim, who reported the incident to her school nurse, she had attended a February 2016 performance by Kodak Black at Treasure City in Florence, after which she accompanied him to his hotel room where he is alleged to have told her he couldn't help himself as he tore off her clothes, bit her, rep- oh, Jesus Christ, bit her repeatedly and raped her as she screamed for help. Kodak Black was released from custody in South Carolina on December 1st, 2016, after posting a 100K bond for return to court later on. Uh, within hours of the release, after about Kodak Black, the Miami Times asked, is he a product of a larger societal problem having raised on a steady diet of misogynistic lap, uh, rap lyrics? Within hours of release, he recorded and released There He Go, a single which he mentioned his recent release. Just hopped off the plane I got about a day ago. I just got out about a day ago. Everybody loved me. When they see me, they'd be like, there he go. Got me a new lady. We about to take a trip to Mexico. Crackers took my 40. Now I'm about to go buy a Draco. <laughs> that's like the fucking um Key and Peel sketch. <laughs> he's actually just saying everything he's doing. That is a crime. He got arrested for marijuana, a gun near a child. He had various charges, firearm, marijuana. Yeah, so ultimately he feels like a like a pretty big piece of shit. This is what I expect to have happen. Uh from Drake. Play Meet the Grams, dude. I haven't eaten food yet. It's not good for your stomach, man, you know? Look at the URL for the YouTube video. Me and some buddies were thinking it might be some kind of code. Uh, As a YouTuber, you don't really get to choose this. And I don't think, and this is zero shots at Kendrick, he has any more connections at YouTube to make this happen, especially on a Saturday, than I would. Some people are dumb as shit. Like, I saw this one fucking account. It was like a DJ Academics fan account. And it was like, Kendrick is viewbotting because his video is lower on trending than Drake is is on trending. And I was like, you dumb bitch. I've been a YouTuber for fucking seven years. The trending pa- t- tab, first off, is a joke. It, it, it it's, it's like half a mysterious algorithm, half humans putting in what videos it is. Second off, it's so hard to viewbot and get away with it. And if he's actually viewbotting, like YouTube finds out and they don't give a shit, man. They'll take down the whole thing. Invalid traffic. Goodbye channel. That shit happens all the time. It happens to channels that that don't viewbot intentionally. There's channels that get flagged. You hear YouTubers be like, man, I got flagged for invalid traffic. It's not even them, you know? Discord did it. Yeah, Discord did it, but check it out. They did it, they viewbotted, they removed all the views from it. So they had like 700 million views or something, they removed 99% of them. Just straight up, gone. Uh... 
I really want to keep it PG. That has to be a double entendre, right? I've been thinking about this. Is it because PG Lang? Kendrick's label? That makes sense. I don't think his double entendres, I want to keep it PG because that's where the kids are at and he was calling himself a pedophile. I don't... <laughs> I hear your theory. I do reject it. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's actually not a well, I don't maybe he fucking started the song with it because that's what how RDC started, but I want to keep it PG was at the end of push ups. Which I actually missed. I was wrong about that yesterday. When's a Pokemon stream start? It, check the title, bro. It's gonna be Monday. Your audience is so out of their depth. I I think ultimately you're right. But like the attention this is getting is way larger than the cultural group of uh like of people who would understand this intrinsically because they're so intertwined with like rap culture. They it's just so much bigger, no? This shit's like Super Bowl big. PG is praising We are God. in unprecedented times. We are all watching a Kendrick Lamar rap analysis from a guy who almost certainly has the soundtrack of Hamilton on his playlist. No, Hip -hop no. Hip-hop truly bridges it, all. Buddy, it's Legally Blonde the Musical, respectfully, and I think it goes hard. And just because my most listened to artist is Leve doesn't mean that I can't have a place here. <laughs> Look, man, I saw Kendrick Lamar live. I sang every single word of Good Kid, Mad City, except for the ones I can't. At Coachella? No, he's actually an opener for Kanye. This was 2013. It was actually an insane... Now that I think back on it, it was an insane uh, lineup. But it was Kendrick... In his set was actually just doing all of Good Kid, Mad City, forty-five minute tight set in and out, and then Kanye three hours. And this was like the Kanye who was selling the T-shirts for one hundred fifty fucking dollars on the on the Yeezy store, going psycho in every city. No different in Arizona. It was sick. Gum gum, thank you the twenty gifted. Wait, who had a funny tweet? Dude, I've seen... Uh, I guess this is the best version of it. I've seen 8 million versions of this tweet. Thank you, Nolan Kane. Thank you, Shires. The Bush, a second X has hit the towers memes are going crazy. Are doing anything after the Kendrick analysis? Okay, so here's the thing. I have this video that I've been cooking for three months. It's not an exaggeration, three months. I'll tell you why it's taken so long, maybe at a later date. I can't tell you everything right now. Just like fucking straight up legal, I can't tell you everything. But the video is I... uh. Remember that sushi video I made a year ago? I went to like a sushi restaurant. I did a challenge versus Connor. Well, I went back with Connor again. Except this time, me and Connor disguised ourselves as professional sushi chefs at a Michelin star restaurant. And then we went to see if we could trick people into thinking they were eating a Michelin star meal. Uh, 
And I'm not going to spoil what happens, but that's, that's the video. So I'm going to, that video is actually literally uploading right now. When that shit's done uploading, I'm going to send you guys all right there because I want you all to watch it. Thank you very much for the two uh, pounds, Devils. I uh, I don't listen to either of them, but Kendrick is cooking. I listen to both. Uh, I think Drake, I feel like I listen to in the same way I listen to, like, Imagine Dragons. Somebody else put that shit on, but I'll listen to it. I think Drake makes amazing uh, songs. Passion Fruit? I named my Falco that. But the thing is, like, a lot of Drake music, you don't even have to try to listen to. It will just come on your radar. And my radar is actually Shake Drizzle in the gym with me playing it on the speakers. <laughs> Um, you listen to Drake way more than Kendrick stop role playing. To be clear, I don't think if, if I'm role playing as uh, a white guy who has a mild understanding of rap, uh, because he has researched in the past couple of days, who only listened to video game music in high school, then I feel like I'm doing a pretty good fucking job, because that is just what I got going on. But if you check the Apple Music playlist. You will see Good Kid, Mad City album purchased, and you will not see, uh, uh, well, actually, no, I did buy views. Okay, we're one for one. You have me there, sir. But I also have, wait. Oh, man, looking through, this is a little embarrassing. I'm looking through my purchased albums right now. <laughs> I got, okay, the first, the very first one, this is not a meme, is Toy Story, Randy Newman. It's specifically only one song. The one where uh, they're fucking blasting off and, uh, and then, and then, uh, what he's like, we're, we're going to explode. And then Buzz's like, not today. Anyway, I bought that one. Cause when I was a kid, I would listen to it on the plane every time the plane landed. Cause it made me feel better. Cause they always landed in the car. And I was like, well, this will make the plane land. All right. I'll, I'll do, I'll do a fucking. I think these are only my purchase albums, right? How does it work? Dude, this is embarrassing. I can't show you guys this. <laughs> All right, here it is. I'll do my I'll do my I'll, I'll this is this is embarrassing, but I'm doing a free scroll. All right. This is the Polybridge soundtrack. The Polybridge sound it goes crazy. Bro, it goes crazy respectfully. David Bowie this is this is Strauss waltzes uh slime bought this once Gus Apperton or maybe I bought it because slime liked it I forget yeah we had Masayoshi Takanaka okay this one all right, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to come clean. My most played song on this phone is Baby It's Cold Outside from the Glee cast, but I had to learn it. Guys, I had to learn it in high school for fucking choir. I had to learn it. Officer. I It was literally the lead, man. 
And the Glee version's very different. All right, Justin Bieber, John Mayer, Kanye, Mumford and Sons. This song's kind of a banger. If you guys never heard the Amelie soundtrack. That soundtrack goes crazy. All right. The water bottle looks like a gallon of milk. Yeah, everyone thinks that. Okay, Breakfast in America. We got Daft Punk. Radiohead, The Strokes. Okay, there's Kendrick. Uh, Kendrick again. Kanye. Nas. J. Cole sticks back to John Mayer. Back to the strokes. Some Frank. And this is 50 Shades of Grey, but we don't have to look at that one. But the soundtrack was actually kind of fire. They had Beyonce on that shit. Dude, they had a good soundtrack. What do you want from me? Kendrick dropped another? You're fucking lying. You're talking about the one an hour ago, right? Dude, uh, chill. I've been live. We saw it. If, I thought you were saying another, another one. I was going to fucking... Oof. That would have been... Uh, you know what? I would have said that's too much. I would have been like, frankly, I didn't need that. Uh, all right, let me check. All right, the video's about done. It's processing. What time is it? Uh, uh. Pokey Rogue's happening on Monday, guys. John Mayer goaded. I think John Mayer's a mid writer, but he's a great uh, guitarist. Can we listen to Six Sixteen? Came out yesterday. I know, man. It came out Six Sixteen L.A. time. This is so funny, especially because Drake on the uh, on the IG on the Tupac track which is the worst part of this whole thing by the way I think it's the only insane miss in my mind was the uh, was the AI song like that was actually fucking trash uh, only yeah I think so Wait, do you disagree Oh, I mean, yeah, sure, 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 sure. I, I guess I'm not saying individual line. I'm saying, like, song as a whole. T-Wolves beat Denver. I'm uh, Look, I've been saying they're going to lose. If the Lakers were beating Denver that bad the entire time, it was a close 3-1. Everyone's saying it. Uh, But this part... Drake and at, at the end of this one, if you guys didn't see this one, Taylor made was uh I think it was an IG only release, and he used an AI filter so when he rapped it would sound like Tupac, and then another AI filter so when he rapped it would sound like Snoop Dogg, who like you know presumably if you just had a good enough relationship he's alive you could have asked him to feature or something, and then at the end had like an ode to Taylor Swift. Swift, biggest gangster in the music game right now. You know, I moved my album when she dropped. I said that already. You know, she about to mini run, do a milli rock on your head top. And it's like him glazing Taylor, which is like deserved glaze. But the funny thing is then Kendrick got Jack Antonoff, who produced Taylor's most recent album, like the whole thing, to produce this track. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, you're glazing her. But like, dude, we got the same producer. Like, it's not the same. Oh, shit. We got it. Oh, shit. Okay, the video's ready, chat.
The video's ready, guys. This song sucks as a song. 616? Are you finally ready to play? Have you ever? Let's see. I don't think so. I think Euphoria is better. I think Not Like Us is also better, but I've only listened to it twice. I will say, man, one thing that's been annoying has been, like, I think it's been fun. And I think we've all had pleasure in just, like, looking into the beef in the lyrics and the songs in the timeline and whatever. But there are some Kendrick fans who act exactly like Rick and Morty fans. <laughs> and I, I, I can't, it makes me cringe so hard every time. It's like, dude, you must have a very high IQ to understand Kendrick Lamar lyrics. It's like, please, listen to yourself. Well, I, I, I do. That's the one thing I kept seeing this tweet last night because fucking blue checks get floated up. And it was this guy's like, bro, do you even understand the lyrics? And it's like, yeah, motherfucker, we all went to genius.com. <laughs> we all scoured through Twitter and found the 20 fake quintuple entendres and maybe the one or two real ones. But I, that's the one part. Uh, all right, I need to focus. I need to focus. I, I need a title for this video. That's the fucking big thing. I pretended to be a Michelin star sushi chef. Hmm, fuck, what do I call this video? Shit. I pretended... to be a real Michelin star sushi chef. Maybe just not even sushi. I pretended to be a real Michelin star chef. I tricked... What do I call my fucking videos when I cheat and, and whatnot? Max Foster did this? Did he? I see. I opened a restaurant that only served stolen leftovers. I tricked food critics into eating cockroach. I pretended to be a real Michelin star chef. Mm. Shit. We're doing your job for you? Yeah, but you're not doing it good enough. <laughs> I need you to do better. Colonizers colonize your taste buds. Okay, relax, buddy. I know we've been listening to a lot of Kendrick, but you're getting a little too artsy for this. <laughs> Let's think bigger picture here. A 
Okay, how about how about I I pretended to be a Michelin star chef. Is it Michelin star chef? What do you call it? Maybe I'll use, hold up, hold up. Now we're cooking. Master chef. I pretended to be a master chef. I, I, okay, wait, 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 wait. Let me think here. Let me think here, bro. Everyone needs to chill. Well, here's the thing. I can just name it whatever the fuck I want, and then if it doesn't work, I can just change it later. There we go. That's that confidence we needed, man. I fooled strangers. I don't like the word fooled. How I tricked strangers into believing I'm a master chef. That's kind of good. It's pretty long. ChatGPT, can you shorten this title for me? I fooled strangers into believing I'm a master chef. Is fooled or tricked better? That's the question. I think it's tricked. It's definitely tricked. I could also do made. I tricked strangers into believing I'm a master chef. I made strangers think I'm a Michelin star chef. I made strangers believe I'm a Michelin star chef. I tricked strangers. I think it, I made might be better because I tricked strangers into believing is worse than I made strangers believe I'm a master chef. That's not bad. Wait, hold up. Wait, why is it kind of good? Left no crumbs, I'm saying. I think Master Chef is better than Michelin Star Chef because I have some Michelin stars. But if if you even look up Michelin Star Chef, Master Chef will pop up. Or I could make it I pretended to be a master chef. This is what happened. That's not bad. Whoa, wait, that's kind of hot. I pretended to be a master chef and this is what happened. Wait, that's kind of hot too. I made strangers believe I'm a master chef or I pretended to be a master chef. This is what happened. I think this is what happened might be good. It's a bit of a hook, you know, because, hey, what did happen? 
If I say I made them believe I'm a master chef, then that kind of answers what happened. Mm. All right, I'm going to rip it. I'm going to rip it. I think I just had my dumbest idea yet. You know those fancy Michelin star restaurants where you get 10 courses and half the courses are gold flakes or truffles or caviar, and at the end you spend $500 on the bill? What if I pretended to run a Michelin star restaurant? But not just any Michelin star restaurant, a Michelin star sushi restaurant where I'm the head chef cooking five feet away from the customer. Could I trick complete strangers into thinking they're dining at one of the fanciest restaurants in the world, even though I'm a YouTuber who doesn't know how to cook? Well, that's exactly what I want to do. And lucky for... Mmm. Okay. All right. All right. Fake tats. Bro, what if I told you it didn't stop with the tattoos? I'm not proud of what I wore that day. I am not proud of it. All right. We're going to drop this video then. Are you guys ready? All right, it's live. Chat, I, think I, I am going to end this stream. I'm going to make you all go over to watch that video. I think there's a way for me to make you guys go there directly, right? Redirect. Can you only redirect to a live thing? Oh, I can only redirect to a premiere. I should have premiered it. Fuck. That's whatever. All right, here it is, boys. Boom. Here's the link. Watch party. Nah, because then that'll kill all the views. I'd rather you all watch individually. <laughs> uh, but check it out. It's been a lot of work to make this video come to life. Shout out, Shake Drizzle. Appreciate y'all hanging out. I might be live tomorrow. I'm playing basketball, and I have to do a couple other things. Uh, if I am, hell yeah. If I'm not, Pokey Rogue Monday. I'll see you guys all later. Check out that video, and have a good one. Peace. See you later, guys.